So I wanted to bring you guys along to have a look at this jungle here, the jungle in the making. This is an impressive growth. They are now in their second year. And the trees here in the foreground have not received the technical cut. I show you one that has in a moment. If I pan over these here are now in their first year, at the end of their first year. So if I remember right, we planted them at the end of May together with Sunham and friends. And that is the growth that they were able to have. You can see they are now definitely as tall as a person. And before the summer completely ends, so before it gets colder and they shed their leaves, they will grow a little bit more. And once they have shed their leaves, then it's time for the technical cut. We also learned that we do need to do quite a bit of maintenance between them. Because given there is water and sunlight, everything is growing. So now once more, it is important to start cutting so that the grass that we really want has a chance to grow. Because this other thing is definitely trying to dominate the area. So this is the thing for the upcoming week to take care of. And let's walk a little bit here into the jungle. You can call it that way. There we have a lot of good grass. I wish I could bring the horses in here, but uh, it's a little bit of a challenge at the moment. But in a while that's possible. That's possible. Oh, and by the way, now that I stepped here, I am actually, when I make a step, as you see, I go quite a bit down because of all this new plant material that is now there. So that's very good. So this is a sea of grass. And the thing that I wanted to show you is this guy here. So this one has received the technical cut involuntarily, but it worked. The horses <laughs> did the maintenance and it has come back with a vengeance basically, because it is definitely three meters tall by now. So if you look around, I am surrounded by very tall trees. Oh, let me go in a little bit. So here I am definitely in a spot where the canopy is about to be closed. Of course, this is just a few trees here and you can look there to the other side and you will see that there is nothing yet. But this is definitely the future. So this is an example of a forest strip. The actual strips will be wider, but this is how it's going to look like. And I think I mentioned that. The plan is when the plants are tall enough to have poultry underneath. So these trees are in the second year, so definitely we can have animals underneath these trees, small ones, not the cows, which is why we removed them. But the smaller ones we can definitely have here. And that even includes sheep. But of course we need to have a flock of sheep that we can easily manage that are used to that. So the ones that we have, they probably need some retraining <laughs> if that's the thing with sheep. So there are opportunities. So this is a little bit a glimpse into the future. 
And speaking about the horses, you see the wire there. It is not hot. It is just basically a string um, to indicate to the horses, which understand this, please do not go further. The things on the other side are not for you. But this is. So the idea is to let the horses do some maintenance here in all the areas that are accessible. So we excluded all the places where we have been planting. And speaking about, let me show you tomatoes. But before we come to the tomatoes, this guy is lacking behind, but it gets plenty of water. And the other one that was also lacking behind is this one. And it's not lacking behind so much anymore. The one here at the edge has grown very, very tall. And I just uh, cut down a little bit of the sun hemp there and partially gave it to the horses. This is a great um, forage plant. And here you can see tomatoes that are using a little bit the sun hemp as a trellis. And here are more tomatoes that don't have that sun hemp there. Unfortunately, the dogs made a path here over the tomatoes, but that happens. They are volunteers anyway, and I am now taking advantage a little bit. So, try to be careful not to step on the wrong thing. So, here is another tomato, another volunteer, that with the additional water is now growing. And here we have also a tomato volunteer in there. And this one is also using the other plants for a trellis. And those are volunteers. So they appeared because there was a compost pile and that had seed in it from rotten tomatoes. <laughs> and <laughs> that is how things uh, procreate. We do have some plans for next year, so for spring, to do something much smarter with the tomatoes. And you will see. But for now I can show you the ones that are in the making here. So maybe we can get down a little bit, so you can see them a little bit better. So they are looking very, very good. Of course they are still very green. And we are in September now, but it is how it is. And we are packing quite a bit of warm days. So I mentioned this before, I have been harvesting the last tomatoes in November. So that's not a problem here in this climate. But we do want to make this a little bit better so that we can actually count with a harvest. And I will share the ideas once I'm over there. So here you have a little bit of an update. And see how beautiful this is growing over there. An hour of drip irrigation directly to the trees benefits everybody in that plant collection. So it's not the... Um, little drip irrigation, it's those mini sprinklers, and each tree has one. This would not have worked at the time of seeding everything, but now that they are established, it does work, and it works very good. At the end, sprinklers, like these wobblers, are much better, I believe, but this is then for next year in a different area. So there will be something over there and over here and there so here this will be about vetiver and interesting is also after a bit of rain that this area is greening up very fast it is closed so the sheep and horses cannot get in there but you can definitely see that this is coming along and over there behind the chicken coop um, the mix of sun hemp and friends is also growing quite well it gets watered quite a bit because the water is there it doesn't matter we have no other use for this water source 
so we can simply put the water there for good use. And I have a trip coming up and when I come back then I intend to get us some chicken and by then the Sunday and friends there in the back is then probably also ready so that they can forage on these plants besides of course some additional feed. In here we do have more of the beans. I put them here in these um, little pots so that they are a little bit grower, uh, grow, uh, bigger, <laughs> that they have grown a little bit bigger before we then put them out over there along this uh, fence style trellis. They are just a few days old but they are already sprouting and starting to grow. It goes quick now. The dogs have to stay in their enclosure for the moment because the three horses are roaming the farmyard so that they eat all the plants instead of us cutting them down. It's a better use to feed them because they're a little bit on the skinny side now at the end of summer because where they are there is basically nothing and here we have an abundance in comparison so they definitely should roam this place here and find food and the dogs don't do this so we shift of course I could let the dogs be between the horses but it creates a little bit of stress until everybody calms down and I want them to eat well so I keep the dogs in the enclosure and let them out at night or probably this time I will not change them. Yesterday the horses asked to be let out to join their friend Saka Hawea, the blind mare and today they did not so that's okay I help them in achieving whatever they want. It's communication and it's very impressive how animals communicate with you as a human and you just learn to understand what they are trying to indicate. So they look at you, kind of stare at you and it means I want something and then you have to see what it is. So here and there they scratch or they bang the gate <laughs> that means I want to go through. So, now that we're here, I wanted to show you the okra, especially this very tall one. So, this definitely, this definitely works nice, being a lazy gardener. So, once you have plants that are tall enough, or you manage to keep the other ones um, small enough, then you can definitely do this two-story thing here. So, the grass is underneath, this ground cover, and the okra on top. So that works out very well and I'm looking for more combinations of this kind because you know in this climate here we cannot have a kitchen or market garden with bare soil where we have to weed or do things to suppress the weeds. This is not a good idea. So I think here in this climate we want to have a ground cover and basically do the no-till no -till, um, variety in a garden. But then of course you have to find the right combination of plants because a lot of things grow very fast for example like this uh, spinach type as we now have learned and that is not what should win so win in this case uh, the winner should be the okra and over there you cannot see the sprinkler anymore Angel cut this down a week ago so that the sprinkler goes over top but now it has regrown and we have to do this again we do have half a bag of broad beans the seeds are a little bit older and they have been around the shed for a while so our idea is to throw them over top of all this and then use the weed whacker to cut down 
all these plants, so the sun hemp, the corn and the sunflowers, step by step. So basically take off the top, then a little bit more, then a little bit more, until it is very, very low, in order to basically chop them up. And the weed whacker with the string seems to be a good tool for that. And then we let the broad beans grow there a little bit. Um, we can even eat them. So that is a thing that came to mind just because we have it. And the time is sufficient until the frost comes so that these plants will then grow and maybe produce something here in this case because we have irrigation. So this is very positive. Unfortunately, it sits right here on the driveway <laughs> and there it does not make a lot of sense. I would love to have them in here, but not at this time. We might let them in here after the tomatoes are done and we are about to do the technical cut, so it doesn't matter. And uh, given the state of the trees, they are probably not good for wood chipping because it's not wood, it is very soft, so you can easily cut them with a machete in one blow. So it's probably a good idea to let some animal do the part, uh, one part of the job. But that requires that the tomatoes have been harvested. Or we would have to fence off this little piece, so it's there where my shadow is. And speaking about, I need to go to the other side. And then I can show you that. So there are these cattle panels, six meters long. And they are well, about a meter thirty high or so, or wide actually. And when you put them upright, then that's the height. So the idea is to put basically a fence here, two segments. I measured this by doing some steps. So two six meter panels would fit here. So we basically place them in front of the first row of trees, these three little guys there. It doesn't matter that it ends up pretty close to the trees because they will grow quickly over them. And then we have a trellis. A trellis that also acts as a fence. Of course, so that the horses, when we have them in here, will not nibble on whatever goes there. We can move this a little bit out, so straighten it basically. So that one here is right. The other one needs to come a little bit out. And then we can have some beans on this trellis. And in the long run, we build step by step out of these cattle panels and similar material. We have another variety. Also, um, we build a fence around this. And once this is completely fenced in, then um, we can even keep some animals that will not jump out of this in here sporadically and add some manure and eat whatever we assign them to do. So there is another option and I thought about putting another panel or another row of cattle panel after the second row of trees, so on that side. And there, in spring, we can then plant some tomatoes and also let them use the trellis. And we can repeat this and we can also even do this with chili, so I thought also about planting chili in here so that we have a summer crop again that we can share and also use ourselves. Some basil in there would also be good and uh, other things that you need to make a good tomato sauce, for example. So we are looking into what we would like to have ourselves and also what might be interesting to be shared. And I think it is a good idea to focus on everything that is heat loving and basically put us into a position of a specialty food provider, so to say, <laughs> for things like very hot chilies and sun ripened tomatoes and all that stuff that you could associate with our climate here in Andalusia. So that might be a fun thing to do. And 
it also suits our self so this has a win-win aspect to it and we can then figure out how to do this in a lazy way in here so that we don't have to tend to this garden every day because we would need to do other things and one thing i should mention so a few things are getting out of the way now things that have been blocking us and once that is done we will start with our construction projects and one of the construction projects but is on position three it's not the first thing to do um, is a cabin a cabin that can sleep a few people so at a minimum um one in each room but we can also pack the room with four so that's the size of the thing so that we could even sleep eight if necessary and uh, i want to have this here so that we can host um, events and uh, also allow people to help us a little bit so that we can provide them some um yeah some decent accommodation like i said before i don't want to say yeah over there is a free place and you can pitch a tent that is not um what i think is uh, is good manners so i rather offer a cabin with all the amenities that you would expect from a rural hotel something like that so hot and warm shower um a little kitchen um corner and uh, a decent bed and all these things because after all if someone shows up here to help us we should also be appreciating that and that is one way of doing it so now that i mentioned this that this is number three so number one is to build a roof for the solar panels so that they finally um don't run the risk of being blown all over the place when the wind comes and Sakahawea over there also gets a better place that is a little bit nicer so two benefits there and the second thing is to build a barn let me turn around so up there on that platform there we want to build a barn something like 12 by 12 meters I think that makes it 40 by 40 feet and further to the entrance that is the location for the cabin and another plan is also to put our solar system in here so there is a room that is suitable and cold and for that we also need to do a lot of trenching so that we can lay pipe cables water lines and uh, all these things so we are going to be very busy with construction and you will see when we start. So that really isn't the idea, but we need to keep this somewhere. And this is some rough fodder for them. So that's okay that they eat a little bit of that, but they should get their nutrients from all the green stuff that we have around. And they eat the spinach, this one there, they do eat it, but it seems that they also look for volume, so they haven't munched on this that much. As you can see in her case, she eats all the old grasses, the old stuff, but in between there is also something green. But in any case, this is a lot better than to use a machine. Of course, this is not the place where we want to make good soil, because there will be a concrete slab. So right here in this place. So to give you a little bit of an idea. So this platform here, from one end to the other over there, is some 18 meters wide. And that barn should be 12 by 12. And then on this side get an apron that is also covered by another roof 
and this is north so we have then east over there so we have a morning sun shining on that porch and here on the other side we then have the evening sun just as right now with a little bit of rain and also some help during August with the drip irrigation that we have here that Veti there is making a good job it stabilizes the platform and at the same time it provides some mulching material and we will later um, when this is turning into autumn colors um, cut it and use then the leaves for mulch not right here because there's plenty of other material but we will take this also to the wannabe food forest to mulch the trees there so you certainly spotted this already in the previous clip you see how green it is there close to the trees of course the irrigation lines that we see there they also do help they have maintained this pretty wet actually i can see some glim some water there glistering in the sun because this is now open and like i said we do have this water source at the outflow of the water reservoir we don't use it for irrigation in the farmyard because we switched to the other well and now in order to avoid the pressure build up we just leave it open one time here one time over there and that way this gets a lot of additional moisture and as you can see with all this additional moisture um, things go up uh, green up very quickly and once we get the time for this so i think that will then be by spring where i want to run a chicken tractor here and also use some irrigation so that we can establish more of the Polovnia trees and create what I originally envisioned here in this place. So several rows of Polovnia trees. We planted a lot here, but they all died. They either died by drowning in the hole because the hole was not um, permeable to water. So the walls were too, too compacted and the roots did not like that and then in another row they died of thirst so those are the survivors and the idea is to have rows with enough space to run a sick chicken tractor in between this idea exists since a while but nobody really managed to implement it the right way so we planted trees here and also there. So we probably lost a hundred trees or so in here because of the mistakes and not knowing. But by now this is different. So when the time comes, there will be more trees in here so that we can do the chicken tractor thing because it's a place that is very good for this. And having more trees there will then also block the wind that comes from over there. I spoke about this a while ago. I would love to plant something there as a barrier. And maybe this time around with some native trees we can also manage this. But I guess with all the things that we have planned this is something for spring and definitely not for November. And speaking about November we will plant with Life Terra, those 14,000 saplings that they promised us, I have it in writing, that we will receive them. The only thing is we need to prep the area and for that, first we need to purchase a few things. And once we have prepared the area, so we need to plow a little bit in there, so that we have places to set the saplings. You will see how this will go and uh, also the irrigation should be there before we start planting and once we have figured all these things out and i can actually tell you a date then i will make announcement this will be a completely separate video just to announce this um so 
that those who have been interested in helping us can then make their plans and I hope this will happen in November and will not get postponed. November is almost around the corner so we need to purchase this BCS um, two-wheel tractor that has a plow and all these things. I hope all this um, comes together in time. I will let you know once I really can tell a definite date. I have to say it feels so much nicer with all this new green around. And now that the temperatures are back to a normal summer and not the 40 degrees centigrade. So today we had maybe 32 or so. So that's uh, a lot more pleasant. And now it's probably 25 or so. And there's a slight breeze here and there. So it definitely feels quite different, a lot better.